Hello and welcome to the Musicians Map podcast. My name is Kane Power. This podcast is about providing information and advice to musicians looking to get started, get ahead and grow success in music. It's about breaking down the barriers between artist and industry and giving real life practical advice about music. I'll try to have a new episode each week and I'll definitely have lots of knowledgeable guests to help me out and lend their authority to our topics. We've got a lot to discuss today. We're going to be talking about artist management, what you should be looking for and when you should be looking for representation. We're going to talk about auditions, upskilling and diversifying your skill in order to become a better performer. But perhaps most importantly, we're going to distinguish between talent and skill and we're going to talk about the ever elusive X factor. What is it and do you have it? And lending her wisdom and authority to these topics is my incredible guest this week. Lily the Chihuahua. Say something, Lily. You're not interested. No, no, she's not my guest this week. She's just frightened of the construction noises going on outside, which you can probably hear. That's a bonus for those of you tuning in on YouTube. No, lending her wisdom and authority to these topics, my incredible guest this week is Sharon Power of Bold Artist Management. It's big and it's all super important, so let's dive right in. So, any introduction that I could do wouldn't do it justice. So, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and telling us a bit about how you got into what you're doing and what it is exactly that you do. Okay. Right, well, my name's Sharon Power, and I'm a talent manager specifically for actors, and I have been doing this now for 32, almost 33 years. In um, 2007, I expanded into um, Sydney and Australia. In 2009, I expanded into Melbourne, Australia. In 2011, I kept on my little journey and, and expanded into Los Angeles. And then in 2012, New York and in 2016 London. Mm. So um, I continue to walk around the globe (laughs) looking for exciting new acting talent. And many of those actors are musicians as well. So um, from my point of view, they cross over quite quite a lot. Mm. And um, yeah, so here I am talking to you. Nice. Brilliant. And um, what's, what's the name of your... Agency? The agency is Bold Artist Management. Bold Artist Management. And, and, and its latest invention. <laughs> Brilliant. And for those of you wondering about our name, Sharon yes. is my auntie on my father's side. It is a family run podcast. <laughs> so I want to go back a few months ago. Yes. Um, maybe a couple of months after I got back into the country. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Ruth and I uh, had come to stay or something. Um, and you started talking to me about, um, the large amount of emails that you get, um, on a daily and weekly basis, um, from musicians Mm -hmm. approaching you, um, looking for representation. Um, and that was actually one of the things that, um, sparked an idea to start Musicians Map in the first place, thinking, what are all these musicians doing? And maybe there's a way that we can help them. Mm -hmm. Um, good idea. So... Can you maybe just um, explain to me, uh, explain to everyone that's listening, what what those emails are and what what sort of ha- what happens? Okay, um, basically, we have a, a, a an application process for actors, um, which is on our website. And what happened was because because we called the company Bold Artist Management, the um, the connotation, of course, includes musicians, mm. which at this stage we don't represent, um, but what we started getting was quite a few um, emails from young, generally speaking, artists who had either started and didn't know what to do next. They literally had what they considered to be a talent. They might have recorded or they have recorded at least one song because they've sent it to me with their email Mm. um, and literally they're asking for help. Um, And 
you know, I can't help them because that's not my area of expertise. But the thing is that managers generally can't help them at that stage. Mm. So what you're doing, I think, is fantastic because it's actually going to take them through the journey that they have to go on before they get to a manager. Yeah. And um, I, I think that's fantastic. So what are these people actually sending? They send generally send, send a link um, to a song that they've written. Sometimes it's on YouTube. Sometimes it's on, you know, a, a, another platform. And generally, it's just them singing. You know, some of them are quite professional, mm-hmm. and some of them are totally not professional. Um, and it didn't really matter because um, you can tell talent when you hear it. Yeah. You know, and you like what you like. And even I, and I'm not a musician, and I'm not a musician's manager. Um, even I know what I like. So. My problem was that I couldn't advise them because I didn't have anywhere to send them. I mean, Mm. a music manager is not going to be interested in most of these people at the stage that they're at. But I couldn't tell them what they needed to do because that's not what I know. So, and you know, it's easier, way easier for actors or aspiring actors to, to get that information. But it's really, really difficult for musicians. There is nowhere to go. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think these, um, what do you think these musicians are, are looking for a magic bullet yeah essentially and and that's the sad thing about it and i mean actors do that too you know they think oh i'm going to get a manager and um and and that's that's all i have to do Mm. and the manager will do everything for me and of course it doesn't work like that it it doesn't work that like that for actors um we can advise them but generally speaking a lot of what they do or have to do before they get to a point where they're going to get professional work of any sort um is stuff that they've got to do themselves. Yeah. And the same thing applies to musicians. They've got to get to a certain standard so that a manager says, yes, I can see potential in this person. I can see earning power. Mm. Because, you know, you have to remember that managers and agents are commission-based. So while we're happy to invest time and effort and even money in some cases to, um, to, a, to a talent, regardless of what their skill is, um, It has to be relatively short term. They have to start making money because if they don't, then we're not making money Mm. and we can't pay our staff and our our premises and all the rest of it. So it's really important that the the musicians learn that they've got to take certain steps before they get to to applying to a manager because they've got to take a package to that manager so that the manager goes, oh, yes, I'm interested in this person. Mm. And, you know, that brings me to another point, and that is that when you sign with a manager, you haven't signed the Holy Grail. What you've done is you've found somebody who is interested in you and is prepared to invest in you to a certain extent. But if you sit back and go, right, that's it, you know, I've got a manager, I'm good, and then in six months' time start knocking on their door saying, why isn't anything happening? then you've got it all wrong yeah. because, you know, um, we're not the holy grail. Mm. We're, we're basically advisors and mentors and negotiators. And, yes, we can link you with some people, but you've got to have the product. Yeah. You've got to have the, pro- the package to sell us. So, I mean, because I've, I've been that musician before. Mm. I've been the guy sending out emails. I did it for years. Even in my first band, you know, we were sending out trying to get you know funding oh, no, no, but you know but we're trying to get funding and we're trying to you know just because you don't know yeah and, that's and right. you think you and know. and you see you know all these famous musicians with managers and record deals and and you sort of look around and go well i guess you just be bold and approach people and send emails and mm. now looking back on it you think there's so much more that oh, you yes. need to know so we've gone over that a bit what what should musicians, what should we actually be looking for in representation? You have to find a manager who, one, works in your genre yeah. or niche. So you need to know what your niche is and you need to know what your, your your genre is. You know, and a lot of artists will say to me, oh, I'm a rapper or I'm a, you know, I'm a pop singer. But you need to know more than that. Yeah. And you need to have the package that goes with that, that genre. There's no point sending me... Um, an email or any manager sending us an email saying you know I'm a rapper and then attaching a pop song Mm. um, or vice versa you know you have to know and and you have to have the package that goes with the genre and the niche 
And then you've got to find the manager that fits in there because, you know, some work in that, in that area and some don't. Um, and, and particularly with the smaller management companies, they probably are very, very specialised. Mm. So they do, you know, as a musician, it's really important to find the person who, one, works in your niche and, and, and with your genre, and two, has um, at least other artists within that genre or niche that, that who are making inroads or starting to make inroads who you can say, well, look, you know, this this person, this manager, whoever it is, has got some people working. And it won't be everyone because no manager has a 100% success rate. Yeah. You know, our success rate varies, but it's probably, you know, on the underside of 50% in many cases, particularly with musicians, I would think. Mm. Um, but if you've got the package and, you, and you're solid in, in what you know and you have the skills and the education, then... Um, yeah, the, the manager is your next big test, really. And yeah. the easiest way to find a good manager is to look who's representing the guys who are up above you yeah. and then try and find a junior in that company, yes. a junior manager or someone who's um, just starting out but who has worked with that company or in that genre. And they're in that niche. They're, yeah. Now, there's a great opportunity here to plug um, my free course, Um, Because there is an entire lesson in the free course um, that is about finding your niche and why it's so important. So there's that. Um, Yes, from the from the back seat from the back seats (laughs) over there. Um, Now uh, I've got. When should they be looking for for um, for representation? And I think we've kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, Basically, we're thinking. What, what you just said about trying to find someone and looking around at the people um, and the artists around you that maybe have representation, um, when you're doing that, it's probably you're probably going to notice, right, that they're at quite a higher level. Yes, very Unless high. you're already there, in which case you probably already have a manager. Yes. So, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is... Um, you won't really know until until you until you get there. No, the truth, and in, 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 particularly in the music industry, I think is that the manager is more likely to find you there we are. than than you find them. Yeah. Um, and it happens in the acting industry to a certain extent, but less so because, as I said, we have, you know, particularly for example in Bold, we have development. Um, strategies so some an actor coming into our agency gets those step ups Mm. whereas there's no management company for musicians that really does that to any large degree that I know of Um, so the thing is that that the artist has to get out there to put their stuff out there they have to be good and they have to have the package and the manager will find them in the same way that a label will probably find them. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the world of the internet has, you know, changed everything. I mean, look at Justin Bieber, you know, that's where, how he was discovered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what, essentially what you're saying is that by the time you're ready to be looking for a manager, managers will probably you, be approaching just, you in the same yes. thing as labels. So you've mentioned the package a couple of times. Now, what really, what specifically do you mean by that? Okay, a package is for anybody, any artist, and it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter whether you're an actor or a musician or a model or a dancer, whatever it might be. Your package must include headshots and professional headshots. It must also include um, a resume of the stuff that you've done and, mm. and training. So, for example, with a musician, if you're a singer, where did you learn to sing? What singing lessons have you learned? What's your vocal range? Um, if you're, uh, you know, play an, an instrument, where did you learn? All of those things should be written down so like, that they're like in a black press and white. Kit almost. It is exactly that a press yeah. kit. So then you attach to that a link to anything that you've recorded and you know again make it professional don't record something in your bedroom and send it through because it's not going to it's not going to sell you it's what it does is scream amateur yeah in the same way that someone who sends through a snapshot that mum's taken at home Mm. um screams amateur you know and if you want to be taken seriously as a professional then it's got to be professional headshots 
yeah. um, professionally presented um, music or, or, or reels if it's if it's an actor um, and press. So if you've gigged, you know, if you've been at a gig and, and you've been in the local newspaper or you've been in a magazine or there's been something online about you, mm. put that in your package because yeah. it t- tells people that you are starting to become known. Mm. And then the big one, social media. You know, if you've got a social media following, stick that in your in your package on your resume. You know, I have Facebook. This is my Facebook address. I have X number of followers. Yeah. Um. And you know, same with Instagram and any social media that you've got at all. So the whole package is quite a lot of information. But what you're doing is you're selling yourself. You're selling not just your talent, but you're selling your potential. So mm-hmm. what you're saying is you're saying to this manager, you know, hey, yes, I've got talent and yes, I've worked hard because I've learned these skills mm-hmm. um, and I've taken my talent and I've developed it and I've got to this point. But not only that, I've spent some time and I've got a whole pile of followers who will be loyal to me and I have performed at these gigs. And so those people who have been at those gigs are probably part of my social media following. Um, and, and what you're saying to the manager is, I'm going to earn you money mm, so because I'm a business. And so, so essentially, you're pitching your business. Yes. And you should treat it that way. Yes. And also, I guess the the contents of this of this press kit mm-hmm. is essentially your career to that point. To that point. And if yes. your career hasn't, um, you know, done much up until that point, Don't then perhaps you're not a really a business worth investing in just yet, no. and you probably need to continue. Yeah. Um, working on your business yeah i have a catchphrase that i use all the time and that is that you know talent is one thing but skill and perseverance and proactivity are the key ingredients Mm. you know so it doesn't matter what your it doesn't matter what your medium is it doesn't matter whether you're a musician or an actor if you are not not persevering and you're not prepared to invest in yourself by being proactive and spending money and spending time to learn and to educate yourself about the industry and the people in it um and you know that's another thing will remind me to go back to that um then you're not ready Mm. you're not ready for a manager so I think a lot of people listening might need to take a... Um, a step back. Take a step back. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's, as I said, it's easier for actors. And if I had a million dollars, I would set up an, an agency or a management company that, that did this for these people. But I don't have to now because you've done this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot cheaper for them than paying a manager 15% for the next you know, however long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, it's just, I mean, it's talking about this is it's bringing up so much stuff that I've already been through myself. Mm. Um, just this exact thing, you know, just over the years, constantly sending everything I ever do out to labels and managers and, you know, trying to get noticed by them. Yeah. And in actual fact, I was just, it's, it was just a waste of my time and my energy. Mm. Um, I should, which I should have been putting back into my music and my career um, because I just wasn't ready. You're, you're probably more spending money as well yeah that you know you're spending money on the wrong things mm, mm. um you know and again you know this is you know the musician's map now that i've had a look at it, it it deals with that and it says no don't spend your money here spend your money there yeah you know and i think that that's really important for them to um to understand because any artist has um a long long road ahead of them mm. and you know if, i don't know what the stats are for musicians but for actors it's something around 2.2% of people who call themselves actors will make a living wage. Yeah. So, or more. So, you know, if you take into account your A-listers and your, and your, even your B-listers and you go right down to people who work essentially as actors and they might work three or four or five times a, a year at most, um, you know, they might, they might be making 30, you know, in American dollars, 30 to $50,000 a year. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, how do you measure success? Mm. You know, if you want to be famous, then, you know, that's, you're not going to be, you're not going to be famous on $30,000 a year. Yeah. Yeah. But you can still be successful. You on can $30, totally be successful. I'm, yes. I'm big on that. On success is, oh, and, uh, and success is how a, you measure it. It is totally not measurable because it's it's a very independent thing. You know, I have um, people on my on my roster who work once a year and have a fantastic day or week on set, and as far as they're concerned, they are hugely successful. Yeah, and 
that's fine by me. Yep. That's absolutely fine by me. If they're happy, I'm happy. And that's the main thing. Yes. And so, so same goes for musicians. So let's just backtrack a tiny bit. Why don't why don't musicians necessarily need a manager? I mean, we know we know about you know how the industry has changed and how a lot of it is online. Mm-hmm. Um, why do we need a manager until until we're becoming successful? Because the manager is not going to help you. It's not going to be useful to you. Um, again, you know, it comes back to you've got to take those steps and you've got to be um, you've got to be ready. You know, it's the same for for actors who want to work, for example, in Hollywood. If you don't, if you are not American, then you've got to go through certain steps to be able to work in America. Um, you can't just walk in and say, hey, I'm here. Mm. Um, there's certain things you've got to do. And the same thing applies to musicians. You've got to take those steps. You've got to take, you know, you've got to, as I said, you've got to take the steps to get to your package so yeah. that you've got something that a manager goes... Yes, this person is. I'm going to invest in this person because this person is going to make me money. Yeah. Because ultimately, I'm a business, mm. and so you know, if I'm a commission manager, um, as musician um, and music managers are, um, d- generally speaking, we need someone who's going to make us money because otherwise, how do we pay our bills? Yeah. I could have a hundred musicians on my books and none of them working. Well, nothing's going to happen for any of us. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't musicians. Shouldn't even be looking. Don't, no. They don't, don't need a manager until managers are really looking for them That's or they're finding exactly themselves the in a situation where where they are getting a lot of attention, getting some income and are thinking, I don't know where to go. Yeah. I'm, I need help. I've had a couple where that I have helped, in fact, who have been approached by labels. Yeah. Um, and they just you know literally the the label had said look we can do this this and this and here's a contract sign it Mm. um and there's a really dangerous area because you know you've got nobody as your advocate you're Mm. just literally looking there and you know for any artist that's a real ego trip it's like wow i've got someone who's really after my material you know again and it's like (laughs) where's the pen you know let me sign and and i think that that's that's the time you know, if yep. if not before, that's the time that you need you need a manager. You need somebody in your corner, someone who's going to fight for you and make sure that you don't give away the rights to your music. I mean, I have had horror stories from the music industry of uh, of musicians who've signed away the rights to their uh, music for years, decades, mm. um, and it's a huge fight to get it back. And I mean, of course, the labels are businesses, you know, they're just trying to get the best deal for them as oh, they yeah, can possibly do. It's not vindictive, no. it's business. Yep. But and if you, you don't need... know about business, exactly. you might need a you, manager. You might need yep. a manager, exactly. So, okay, let's just change, Let's. I think we've reached the end of that, kind of, We can. how far we can go on that for the moment. Let's totally just change entirely. Um, Oh, hang on, I better have a glass of wine then. Yep, <laughs> yep, get it in. <laughs> now, I've heard I've heard you say that you um, advise some of your actors to pursue uh, musical interests, yes. perhaps learn instruments, um, perhaps you know, become competent at singing in order to upskill and sort of you know, widen their horizons when it comes to parts. Would you say it's worth uh, the other sort of the flip side? Is yes. is it worth musicians getting uh, their acting chops or their dancing skills? You know? All of that, all of that, very much so. For two reasons. The first thing is that it's all about exposure, and it doesn't matter how you get your exposure. You know, I mean, I could go back generations to. The Osmonds, the, the the Cassidy family, you know, I mean, they, they started out actually as musicians who acted, mm. who got their profile, who became famous, um, and then went on and, and became fully-fledged musicians. And, and, and in this day and age, it's even more so, because if you're acting and you happen to appear in a really high-profile sh- um, show and get a lot of following and... Um, have a lot of success in that area then it will automatically flow over to your music so if you're good enough and you turn up to do a gig somewhere people will come because you are this person whoever you know whatever um, the character is who's launching careers off music careers off the back of their acting skills these days like um what's that dude uh grey worm (laughs) cheap seats what's grey worm 
What's his? Uh, okay, this is an overdub, and the guy's name is Rally Ritchie. Anyway, it's great Rally Ritchie. Friends. He's got a successful yes. music, um, music career. career. Um, yeah. Donald Glover. Yes, definitely. Um, I can't yes. remember what his he calls himself musically as well. Um, there's high, higher profile ones, obviously. Childish Gambino. Childish Gambino. Um, you know, there's Jared Leto, um, successful actor, successful Idris band. Alba. Idris Elba. I mean. It goes on and on. It goes on, on and on. You, you, you know. go. You know, I mean, I, it's been happening for, you know, I'd look, I, you know, I went back to when I was a kid or before, and, and um, it's been happening forever. Um, mm. And it will continue to happen forever. I mean, they're artists. Yeah. You know, I mean. Exactly, exactly. And and they're they're putting themselves out there um, in one of many ways in mm. which they can, and then capitalizing on that, on that on to that promote exposure. their other yes. interests. Yeah. As long as the exposure is positive and good. Mm. You know, I mean, a career colour is is quite often reality TV. Not always, but quite often reality TV. Um, and, and just simply because, you know, you all of a sudden put yourself in a different, slightly different box. Um, but you do, I mean, I think you have to be careful when you're making a transition from one to the other mm. and make sure that you do it well. And so it might be if you start out as a musician but go into acting to build your profile, then you'll have a manager who's advising you on your acting because as I've said several times, it's easier to get an actor, acting manager. Mm. They will then start to help you cross over into your music. Um, and, and that's really important that you don't cross over badly. Yeah. Um, you know, so it has to be that has to be managed. That's quite an important thing because otherwise it will just all fall over and yeah. you become somebody who's neither. Yeah, you know. I mean, from what I've been thinking, um, even from from a few steps below, you know, um, being a famous actor and then being able to, you know, promote your music on the side, getting your acting chops up, uh, learning to dance, um, yeah. it's it's going to make you a more well-rounded artist. You know, oh. and but but not only that, it's going to make you a more well-rounded performer, and it's probably going to make you a more endearing performer. When you're on stage, you know Absolutely. you've got movement, you've got expression, and that's one of the biggest things. You know, when you're presenting your music to people, is to is to convey that expression to them. You've got you know, to convey, with yeah, them. convey yes. their sentiment and and connect with your audience. And if you are doing that, not only through your instrument or your music, but through your movement and through through your body language and perhaps through some fantasy or through acting as well mm. it's just it's just going to be much better isn't it oh absolutely absolutely and you know i mean this the same thing goes you know we say to actors you know build your skills particularly musical skills um you know triple threat actors for example are really popular at the moment you know because they can act they can sing and they can dance or mm. they can act they can sing and they can play a musical instrument and more and more Particularly in this day and age, we're seeing a lot of musicals. I mean, you know, um, La La Land. Um, yeah. You're seeing a lot of that kind of thing. Uh, Mamma Mia, you know, where they're shooting the second version of that at the moment, um, or the second and the, the prequel, if you like. Um, and so those kind of skills are totally interchangeable. So, you know, you might have a singer who has never been an actor, but they could easily land an acting role just based on the skill as a singer. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah, and it's got to help when you're going, going for parts, oh, or or going for. Um, well, it makes you, you know, more interesting. Trying to get into a band, or you know, trying to kind of pursue a career. Mm. Um, if you can say, oh, by the way, um, I am an actor, or I am a dancer, or something as well, you've got yeah. more of a better chance. Well, it makes you more interesting. And it also stretches the, the connection thing because when you go for an audition for something, and whether it be for, a, for, a, for you know to be in a band or for a TV show or whatever it might be, you have to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, there's there's, there's gazillions of them out there. Um, so if you can stand out from the crowd by connecting with the casting director or or whoever it is that's running the audition by having a skill or a um, a particular. I don't know what you'd call it, a particular um, interest that they relate to, then you've connected with the casting director, mm. which makes the audition process so much easier. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I've known actors to go into an, an acting audition and get totally nervous and blow their lines and burst into song um, just <laughs> simply to calm themselves down. And, yeah. I mean, they stand out. I mean, I'm not recommending that for everybody, but um, it, it, sometimes it works. Okay, so let's, let's talk about auditions. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that one thing everyone hates. Yes. Yeah. So we all have to do it. Yes. I mean, and when I'm when I'm talking about auditions, I mean um, 
for actors, you know, actual auditions, um, for musicians trying to get parts in shows or plays or as the band in a live stage show. Mm -hmm. It's even down to joining a group because, you know, you always, it's essentially, it is an audition. When you get into a room with people and they say, okay, let's see what you can do. Mm -hmm. Are you good enough to join us? Mm -hmm. That's an audition as well. So let's start with the more professional auditions. How, how do they work? It varies considerably. Um, you know, like, I mean, acting auditions, any audition is really fast, generally yeah. speaking. Um, in fact, I think musicians, when they're auditioning for a band or something, actually get a fairer go than, than sometimes actors do. You know, for an example, musical theatre, um, which is, you know, sort of a, a little bit of a crossover. Mm. Um, if you can sing, then you go into a room and you sing a little bit. And if they like what they hear in that little bit, and it might literally be, you know, sort of a chorus, or it might only be a, a, a chorus, it might be a whole verse, who knows. But um, you only sing a small amount. You'll get 30 seconds. Yeah. And if they like you, then you'll go into the next room and do a dance audition. And uh-huh. again, it might be 30 seconds. There we go. And if they like you, then you'll go into another room and you might do an, um, an acting audition. You know, you might read a, read a monologue. And again, it might only be a minute or, or less. Mm. Um, and if they don't like your singing, you go home. Simple yep. as that. You don't get the automatic chance to show that you're stronger as a dancer. And so the same thing happens with actors. You know, if they've got an acting audition, they go into the room, they, they do the the script, the scene, whatever it might be, um, in front of the camera. If the casting director has, as they've walked into the room, said, oh, yes, this person's right for this role, I'm going to give them a shot, mm. and their first read is good, then they might get a second read. But if the casting director, as they've walked into the room, going, no, this, is, this person's all wrong for this role, this is not what we're looking for, they'll get first read, they're gone, they're out. Yeah. Um, but if they do a good read but they're still not quite right for the role, they may get a second chance to see if the casting director can pull that thing out that, that, that she's looking for. So as far as musicians are concerned, um, they actually get perhaps a better break. I've, ne- I've never experienced a musician's audition, so I don't know, but mm. I would imagine you get to play a song, at least a whole piece, yep. um, and probably get to have a conversation with the people who are auditioning yeah. you. Yeah. It doesn't happen in the acting world. Every audition yeah, really. that I've done, um, you definitely play a song, if not three songs. You probably organised, you know, three or four songs to play beforehand, probably covers. Um, and you'll go in and you'll check each other out and, yeah. you know, look each other up and down. And then you'll just get on with it and play the music. And you'll know if you click um, with the other people and you'll know really quick. Yeah. And they'll know if, yeah. if you're any good because you can finish the song. Yeah. and play it correctly and then after that yeah it's um so that's the technical element but after that it just comes down to your personality mm. and whether you're you know especially if you're joining bands or you're working with people like music producers or songwriters or any you know or collaborators it's all about the, the, person. the person it's all about mm. how how you get along with each other and whether that relationship could could work yeah so essentially that's kind of a relief in some ways because you can know your stuff and, and go in there and, and, you know, play the songs really well and you still might not get the part because you're just not a match. Yeah. Um, which takes a lot of pressure off, I think, because if you're just not right, then, you know, you just be yourself. Yeah. And and you're probably going to get the best, the best chance because if you're not right Same. for the part, you're not. So what can we do to prepare for auditions? Before, before so we've got an audition. Amazing, we're going to go jam for a band or we're going to apply for a part let's say we're going for a musical that's a great analogy to use the crossover what's the sort of things that we can okay. do beforehand the first thing is is do your homework and find out what the what the genre is you know there is no point going to um an audition for something that is doo-wop and playing heavy metal, mm. um, you know, you have to you have to stick with the genre. And I mean, if in fact, you know, I mean, if you if you're into heavy metal, chances are you're not going to be going for a do well audition anyway. But you yep. know what I mean. Yep. Um, and so it's it, it's do your homework and find out what the genre is and find out with what the niche is and are they right for you? Mm. Because if they're not, then your personality isn't going to match either. 
Yeah. You know, so so that's the first thing. And the second thing is to read the instructions you've been given for the audition. So many actors <laughs> don't read the instructions. And oh my god, we're having a fire sale! Oh, the burning! Yeah. You know, we had some just recently in Australia, um, and after us, after the first day of auditioning, the casting director sent out um, an email to all the agents and said, "Please ask your artists to read this information again, and do not do this, 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 and this." Um, and and what but it, basically what it boiled down to was that the the artist either hadn't read the information or had not taken it as gospel. Yep. And so they went, okay, well, I'm going to go and audition for this, um, this, and it says that I've got to take sheet music, but I don't have sheet music, so I'm going to take my guitar and provide my own music. Hmm. Well, no, they won't let you do it. Yep. It's like, okay, no, you can't. If you, if you can't provide the sheet music, you're not going to sing, so therefore you may as well go home. So you've wasted your time. Hmm. So read the instructions. Okay. And if you have a manager, ask questions. You know, if you don't know, ask questions because we're the conduit to the casting director. So we can go back and say to the casting director, look, we don't necessarily name the artist. We'll just say, look, we are just kind of got a question about this, this and this. Can you just clarify that for us so that we can clarify it for the artist? Mm-hmm. Um, and the last thing is be yourself. Yeah. Don't try and pretend to be something else. Yeah. You know, um, actually... Um, a really, I oh, can't remember her name now, but um, and I read an um, article just recently by an um, actor and she said that she spent, she had a really unsuccessful start to her career and she was quite a late starter. And she realises now that the reason was because she was going into her auditions and as she walked in the door, she was going, okay, what are they looking for? How can I be that person? Mm. So she was turning herself, she was basically being a chameleon and she was turning herself into whatever she thought they wanted to say, which was absolutely the wrong thing to do. And she never got a role. She, she wasn't, wasn't looking authentic. Either. She wasn't, not only was she not authentic, but she was sometimes misreading the room. Yeah. Because they were saying things like, you know, you know, you get the written brief, for, a, for a, particularly for an acting character. Um, and they might say, you know, we want X, Y, Z. But what they're looking for is an essence. Mm. And it's something you know when they walk in the room. Have they got that essence? But if you walk in the room and suddenly turn into something different, then you've yeah. missed it. Yeah, it's yeah. gone. So be yourself. That's it. That's it. That's yeah. the, the title. That's the magic. That's my actual advice as well. Be yourself and learn the lyrics. <laughs> well, yeah, oh read the God, instructions, kind of learn the lines. The, the same of, thing. The amount of singers that I've auditioned and that show up and we say, this is the song, you know, beforehand, two weeks beforehand, and they rock up and they know the first line and that's it, you know, and then they just grunt and growl through the rest of the song. I think like, Come on, man. <laughs> so people, do your research, do your rehearsal I think and of, be yourself. I think of that song, um, I think of that scene in um, Love Actually. Really? Hey, drink slay. Yeah, yeah. Drink, drink, drink slay. Drink slay. <laughs> Love Actually? Um, Love Actually, you know, where he's in the studio and he's trying to sing the Christmas song. Um, oh, he, and, 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 he keeps, and he keeps fluffing the lines because he's, he's, he's completely not learned them and he's trying to sing the old song. It's uh, classic. That. That's exactly right. <laughs> and it applies I love to. That guy. He's so yes, good. he's great. And, um, and the thing is that that's the same for actors. Mm. Don't go into an acting audition and not know your lines. All that is is unprofessional. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, amateur. It's, it's, it's amateur. amateur, and we're looking yeah. at we're being professional yes, people. Exactly. Okay. Being an, being an artist is an is a business. Yeah. And when you realise that, then Thank it you. changes everything. Oh, I'm actually oh, yeah, still uh, just a little bit, please. Okay, so let's move on from auditions. Um, we're kind of going backwards in time. We've started at getting managers, and we're go, working right back to the start. And yeah. Um, before you have an audition, there's a, there's a, there's a myth and we talked about it before. Um, and it's something that, that people, um, say to musicians a lot and they say, um, oh, wow, congratulations on your achievement. You're so talented. And they mean it as a compliment. And, um, it's something that's been said, um, to myself and to a lot of people that I've played music with over the years. And as a musician, even though you take it as a compliment and it's nice, you still 
a kind of thinking, yeah, but the, my talent only got me so far. That's 20 years worth of skill. That's 20 years worth of hard work, you yep. know, that I've, that I've put in to get the skill to be able to play like that. Mm. that you, and then you say it's talented, you're writing it off as something that I was born with, which I really, really wasn't. So I want to try and make a difference and clear up the difference between talent and skill. And it totally applies to actors. It mm. totally applies to anyone across um, most fields, actually, artistic and otherwise. Mm. You know, people are born with talents for all kinds of things. But even if you don't, if you, even if you aren't born with the talent, you can create the skill. Yes. Okay, so can we, can we make a difference between them? Okay. Talent, I mean, talent is, is your starting point, I guess. And I think for any, um, if you want to be a musician and you have no sense of rhythm, then you've got a slight problem, haven't you? Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I couldn't play the drums, for example, because I had no sense of rhythm. Mm-hmm. So I think that if you're born with that talent, that's fantastic. It's a starting point. Yeah. But it is only the start. You know, it, it's all very well to say, hey, I've got a great singing voice. But do you know how to go on stage and connect with an audience do you know how to hit your mark when you go on stage because there's always a mark Mm. do you know how to hold your mic so that you get the right sound at the right time um do you know if if the um if it's a live gig but it's televised do you know how to follow the stage manager's cues so that Mm. you're in the right camera at the right time all of those things are skills that you pick up that go around the talent in the same way that if you have great rhythm and you learn to play the drum and you play the drums, you need to learn how to play the drums well. Yeah. And you can do that by taking lessons, and you can do that by um, watching other drummers who are successful and 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 picking up tips from them. But talent is only the starting point. Yeah. Did yeah, I cover really that is. off enough? Did yeah. I no, that, that was absolutely perfect. That's okay. essentially exactly what i'm looking for that's uh, talent is the springboard it is absolutely and And it is for actors as well yeah like Mm. i sat down at the drums for the first time never having played the drums before and i could play them and not well but i could do a beat you had and you had the rhythm to do it yeah and i had the natural rhythm to do it that was my talent and that's and that's fine I, i have i have everyone has a talent that was mine but without years decades of rehearsal and practice and dedication and hard work i that was all that i had mm, that's right now i have a skill and 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 to use you as an analogy you didn't have the education around the business of being a drummer or a musician that would have enabled you to get to the point to understand when you got to the point of needing a manager Oh, yeah. Instead of wasting all that time, Ugh. you know, as you said earlier, because you lacked education yeah. in what was required. It took that long to get educated in that yes. way. Yes, and you had to educate yourself. Yeah. So, you know, from my point of view, what you're doing with the Musician's Map is you're providing the education. Yeah, read the book. Yeah. Get read. the book and read the <laughs> plug, book. Plug, yeah. I, I, You know, I mean, I, I think this is a fantastic idea because it, um, because it does, it provides the education around being a musician, the business of being a musician. Mm. And that's what it's all about. Yeah, about those hard-earned uh, mistakes. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to finish. Um, and to kind of move on a little bit from talent and skill, um, there's this m- mythical... It's not mythical, I don't think. If, you, if it's what you think, what I think you're going to say. Okay, there's something that we call the X factor, yeah. and I think they even made a TV show about it. Um, what do you mean you think yeah. they made a TV show about it? You, surely you've heard of the is X it, factor. Is it, is it actually called that, though? It okay, is. it is. <laughs> Trying to be cool. I know. <laughs> I know that, that bit's going to get edited out. So, no, I know it is. This is great. We're, we're, we're going for no edits. So what is, a, a, except for the TV show, we don't need to talk about that. Yeah. What is the X factor? How do you know if you have it? And if you don't have it, can you get it? Okay. X factor is the thing that you're born with. But everyone has a certain amount of X factor 
it's just whether you know x factor is made up of a lot of different components and everyone every every person on on the planet has x factor of some sort but x factor can be affected by things like confidence um, or low self-esteem all those kinds of things so most people a good percentage of the population hide their x factor mm. because they're scared of it because you, you know everyone has the experience of doing something and going oh wow they've got a lot of attention you know oops um, and yeah. a lot of people and a lot of people don't want that attention yeah, yeah. I mean there are people out there who actually do want that attention and so they thrive on it so the x factor comes out mm. but there are some people who have massive doses of X Factor and they embrace it. And, you know, um, Johnny Depp is one who comes to mind immediately. Meryl Streep comes to mind. Um, um, Eddie Murphy. Um, you know, I'm thinking actors, but, I, and, you yep. know, I'm thinking sort of the big names. But they're big names for a reason. Mm. You know, they've got that X Factor. You know, Liam Neeson. Everyone takes... I actually think his his X Factor is in a, is in his voice, because everyone repeats his lines. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. So maybe it's his voice. I don't know. But um, have you seen him doing those skits with um, with uh, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant? No. Oh my god. Are they good? They're brilliant. Oh, I have to go and looking for those. No, I haven't seen those. Deadpan. Um, okay, I'll I'll go and I definitely have to see that. Mm. Um, but the thing is that I think that there are some people who have really large doses of it and it's almost like it, it controls their life, it runs their life, it drives them in a way that, that they are completely sort of, un, they're out of control of it, you know, they can't control it, it just happens. Um, and they're very special people and they have yeah. a massive amount. I mean, I think of, um, in latter day times, you know, um, Adam Lambert was mm -hmm. one for me. I mean, it comes out of his paws, you know, and that's just... Now he's you know. touring with Queen. Yes, yeah. And I mean, the first uh. time I saw him on that on the TV show, which we won't name, um, I <laughs> said, oh, wow. You know, and it was yeah. just on TV. Um, you know, goodness knows what he's like mm -hmm. in a live performance. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hey, I mean, Steve, um, Steven Tyler, um, I mean, yeah, Freddie Mercury, you can... I mean, yeah, there's, the, the there's, list of musicians. This is, have this it. is the thing that I'm saying, you know, that it's not something that's rare. Yeah. It's just whether you let it out mm. and how much of it you have. Um, so and most and most people are scared of it. Yeah. You know, and you know, I mean, if you talk to people, they'll go, if you actually put them in a scenario and say, have you ever felt that, you know, you did something and it created a result that made you sort of go, oh my gosh, how did I do that? Mm. Then that's what X Factor is. And you let it out just for that little moment. Did you feel comfortable with it? And if you didn't, then you're probably not a performer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So rather than if you don't have it, how do you get it? I think what we're, what we've reached is everyone has it, but whether they know how to tap it and whether they, not only that, but whether they are comfortable enough to reveal the reveal full extent it. of it, yes, their wild side or their, you know, whatever it is, the magic, it's, the it's, magic yeah. that makes them intrinsically them. Yeah. That's, most, that's most what separates people, us. You know, most people, and Naomi Watts was, was the actor I was talking about earlier who um, was being the chameleon. Um, she was hiding her X Factor. Because mm. she was being somebody else. Mm. Because she was trying, she was being a people pleaser, you know. And the worst, the worst thing a musician or an artist can be is a people pleaser. Because then you're constantly tailoring your performance to other people. People will love you if you're genuine yeah. and you're authentic. Mm. But if you're constantly going, oh no, I need to change up because I need to appeal to this person. You're not never going to please all of the people all of the time. Yeah. So if you're authentic then that enables what I believe is your X factor to come out and, um, and, and, and people will love you for it. And that's it. And that's it. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, authenticity is the key. Yes, it is. And I think that, you know, the problem with authenticity is that people are, um, and particularly artists, if they have low self-esteem, which most of them do, if they're doubtful about their talent, if they've been knocked back and taken, you know, hey, an artist's life is rejection. Mm. You know, I mean, one in a hundred is going to be a positive result, if you like, if you're lucky. Um, so really, 
you've got to somehow find the inner resources to build your your self-esteem and your confidence and to believe in yourself so that you can be authentic Mm. because if you don't have that then you won't be because you're constantly trying to please other people well put thank you and that is that thank you very much sharon my pleasure i've enjoyed it yeah and that's the podcast for this week Thank you so much for listening and or watching if you are getting this on YouTube. The Musicians Map podcast is part of the Musicians Map website, www.musiciansmap.org, where you can find lots more articles and videos, as well as my ebook and audiobook about growing success in music. In that book, you'll find experienced based advice about every aspect of learning music. From listening and learning an instrument to recording, gigging, touring and making money as a musician. For those of you wanting to get serious about your musical journey, I also offer one-on-one development sessions and song critiques, which are honestly an incredible way to gain the focus and direction required to achieve your goals, whatever they may be. I've also got a free five-day challenge to a clear musical pathway. In the five-day challenge, you will learn how to define your taste and clear your path, how to expand your horizons and exploit your musical potential, how to become a better musician just by listening, how to discover your niche and make it work for you, and how to set achievable goals and actually follow through. And it's totally free. So once again, head to www.musiciansmap.org to take advantage of all the resources on offer. Thank you so much for listening to what was my first podcast. I've got some crazy awesome guests coming up over the next few weeks, so make sure to subscribe and keep up to date. Also, please get in touch with your comments, suggestions, and let me know what challenges you're facing at the moment. Go to the Musicians Map Facebook group uh, and join up and let's have a talk. I always try to respond. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Stay positive. Stay positive.